Not sure if you have noticed, but I love bad puns. That's just how I roll. Today, I'm going to recap a 2021 action crime film called Kate. The movie begins in the busy city of Osaka, Japan. A paint-colored truck passes through the streets with a Japanese pop song playing loudly on the radio. Inside this truck is Kate, a highly skilled female assassin, and her mentor Varik, who is getting her ready for her upcoming assassination. Kate is reminded of the stakes at play, and then Varik sends her out to complete the mission. Kate proceeds towards some guards and acts innocent with them for a bit, before killing them within a matter of seconds. After this, she gets into position on top of a roof to land a shot at her target, a man named Kentaro. However, Kate is in for an unpleasant surprise when she notices Kentaro's daughter, Ani, coming out of his car. Kate is uncomfortable with this situation because she doesn't like to have kids involved with her missions. Regardless, she is ordered to take the shot because the target will slip away soon. Kate reluctantly fires the shot and kills Kentaro, thus causing Ani to cry for help right next to her father's body. This incident severely affects Kate, and then some time passes by. Now Kate jogs through the city of Tokyo against the backdrop of night, but she gets emotional upon noticing a mother with her child. Kate isn't able to deal with the life of an assassin anymore, so she goes to Varric to talk about her retirement. Varric finds it hard to believe that Kate would ever consider a normal life, and says that she'll come back to him after a couple of trips to Walmart. Regardless, Kate declares that she'll be done with this life after her next mission. Later, Kate meets a man named Stephen at the bar, and he tries some of his flirting tricks to win her over. Stephen's tactics seemingly work, and Kate has some fun with him in the comfort of her bedroom. However, it turns out that Stephen is actually a professional, who Kate kicks out after paying for his services. Now it's time to get down to business, so Kate takes position on the top of a roof. However, as she locks onto her target, an old man named Kijima, she seemingly faces some health issues, and it causes her to miss her shot. She is advised not to go ahead with the mission, but she ignores her instructions and shoots at the target once he is escorted into his car. This blows her cover and it leads to a chaotic sequence, wherein she has to hijack a flashy car to make her escape. However, she experiences a painful symptoms once again and loses control of the car, getting into a brutal accident. While she is knocked out, Kate thinks back to some of her childhood memories with Varric, and it includes her assassination training. After some time, she wakes up in hospital and learns from the doctor that she is suffering from acute radiation syndrome. This doesn't make any sense to Kate, because the cause of radiation is said to be a rare element called polonium-104. After some quick thinking, Kate quickly realizes that she's been done dirty by Stephen, who had spiked her drink with this element. Kate is advised to rest as she only has one day to live, but she threatens the doctor to give her some stimulants for her condition. With a renewed sense of urgency, Kate tracks down Stephen, who is with his girlfriend, Kanako. Kate smacks Stephen and threatens to kill him, but he reveals that he was hired by Kazuo Sato, who is the manager of a Yakuza clan. Stephen and Kanako beg for mercy, so Kate decides to spare their lives. She gets freshened up in their bathroom and asks for a lemon drink, but they don't have it. Later, she talks to Varik about what happened with her, and he reveals that Kijima belongs to the biggest family in Tokyo. She also learns that Kentaro was Kijima's brother, so this whole thing could simply be a revenge plan. She doesn't have long to live, so she decides to go after Sato and take her own revenge. Varik reveals that Sato's men like to hang out at the Black Lizard Club, so Kate gets to work immediately. At the club, Sato and his men discuss the recent attack on Kijima over a splendid performance, but then Kate arrives and kills one of the men. She threatens Sato and demands to know why he had her poisoned. However, Sato simply says that he was following orders from a higher person, so she shoots him down and threatens his other companion. The Yakuza guards show up, and it leads to a hectic fight scene, wherein Kate brutally kills all of them by using guns and knives. One final survivor eventually reveals that Annie might have the answer that Kate is looking for. She makes her way to a club, where Annie is dancing along to the famous bandmaid, playing hardcore rock music. 
Once here, Kate spots Ani and takes down her guards, after which she drags her away. Ani tries to make a run for it, but Kate catches up to her and pushes for answers regarding Kijima. Ani reveals that she only talks to Kijima through a middleman named Renji, so Kate forces her to call him. Ani reluctantly gives in to Kate's demands and has a word with Renji. That's when Kate takes over the phone and tells Renji that if Kijima wants to see Ani, then he'll have to meet her at the center of the Murakawa marketplace in one hour. Ani remains uncertain whether her uncle Kijima will come save her, but Kate takes her away regardless. Now, Renji calls upon all his goons to help get Ani back, because he can't afford to let Kijima know about this kidnapping. He particularly confides in his right-hand man Shinzo, telling him that Ani needs to be taken care of. Now, Kate's condition grows worse, and it makes Ani feel disgusted. Regardless, Kate takes Ani into a bathroom and locks her inside, giving herself a haircut. With this new look, Kate heads back into the market and gets herself a meal. After some time, Shinzo and his men reach the market and he locates Kate. This leads to a confrontation wherein Kate threatens to leave Ani alone to die if she doesn't see Kijima soon. As expected, an intense and deadly battle sequence begins, wherein Kate uses her skills to shoot all the assassins sent after her. She manages to avoid getting killed, but her condition grows worse with each passing second. In the middle of this confusion, Ani has managed to break out of the bathroom, and she coincidentally runs into Shinzo. However, Shinzo reveals his true colors and points his gun at Ani. Confused, Ani asks why Shinzo is betraying her, but he responds by calling her a half-race girl. Luckily, Kate drops by and kills everyone before Shinzo can carry out the hit. Ani is of no use to Kate as of now, so she decides to leave her alone. However, Ani says she can help Kate because she wants to get rid of Kijima, whom she wrongly believes got her dad killed. Kate isn't ready to take on such a huge responsibility, but collapses from her weakness, so she asks Ani to help inject her medicine. With nowhere else to go, the women decide to team up, so that they can take down Kijima together. They sit down and discuss their next plan of action, and Ani reveals that Renji has a giant penthouse with his boyfriend Jojima. Realizing that Renji is the only person who would know Kijima's location, the women get to work immediately. Ani manages to get inside the penthouse, acting like a damsel in distress. She is quickly led to Jojima, and then Kate breaks inside the house to threaten him for information on Renji. However, Jojima turns out to be a martial arts expert who gives Kate a run for her money. Both of them get into a fierce fight to the death, but Kate gets dominated brutally. Ani tries to help, pointing a gun at Jojima but she's a horrible shot and gets smacked down after accidentally shooting Kate. Luckily, Ani gets back up and smashes a bottle into Jojima's head, thus taking him down for good. After investigating the house, the women learn where Renji is and track him down. Kate quickly kills Renji's guards and threatens him for information. After a lengthy negotiation, Renji says that Kijima last told him that he wants to be among his family. Ani understands this clue, so she takes Kate to an old family house where Kijima's family had grown up together. Before moving ahead, Kate calls Varric to say that she's finally going to complete her mission, but Varric seems a little suspicious with the way he tries to stop Kate. On their way to the family house, Kate and Ani briefly bond with each other. Ani mentions how she never got to see her mother because she was an illegitimate child. The women finally reach their destination, and Kate decides to go in alone. Ani wants to come along, but Kate reminds her that she is still a kid, so she should stay outside. Kate enters the house and finds Kijima, who doesn't seem the least bit bothered to see her. She asks why he had her poisoned. Kijima reveals that he doesn't care about her at all. That's when he shows her a photo that exposes Varric to be the mastermind behind everything. Kate is shocked to learn about this betrayal, and then we see Varric show up outside the house. He tries to talk to Ani, despite her excessively rude behavior. As Kate tries to comprehend Varric's betrayal, Ani finally learns the truth about Kate killing her father back in Osaka. Kijima is ready to atone for his sins, and he allows Kate to shoot him down. She fires a bullet, and then she runs out of the house to get Ani. 
However, Varric has already brainwashed Ani, who shoots Kate to take revenge. With Kate dying on the ground, Varric takes Ani in his car and drives away. However, Kate survives the gunshot, thinking back to her survival lessons with Varric. Here, we learn that Kate had actually spared Kijima, and he pays back the favor by giving her a shot of her stimulants. Meanwhile, Varric is shown to be working with Renji, who was the one that ordered the hit on Kentaro. Now, Kate and Kijima team up to save Ani from the villains, and this time, Kate even gets her favorite lemon drink to refresh herself. Kate, Kijima, and his assassins get into Renji's headquarters and kill all the guards with assault rifles. Varric decides to use Ani as a hostage, and then he sends his own squad to attack Kate and Kijima. A tense sequence follows, but Kate is able to survive her attackers, as is Kijima. With their options running out, Varric and Renji decide to split up, but Renji gets caught by Kijima and his men. Kijima challenges Renji to a sword duel, but Renji ridicules him for being old. Despite this, Kijima owns Renji in the battle and kills him off quickly. Then, Kate unleashes a bomb on Varric's men, but gets into a shootout, wherein she gets severely injured. She manages to kill everyone in her way, and then she confronts Varric. She also tries to apologize to Ani, but Varric mocks her efforts. Hijima and his men reach the scene, but he tells his men to stand down for now. Kate and Varric shoot at each other and injure themselves, thus allowing Ani to escape. Kate has one last word with Varric and spends her last few moments with Ani. She finally smiles for once in her life and passes away in Ani's arms. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.